as a land steeped in intriguing tales and has been a hotspot for unusual phenomena, including alleged alien encounters, mysterious sites, cryptids, ghosts, and of course, even portals. Jimmy Church's journey through Peru offered him a deeper insight into the country's rich history and the unbelievable mysteries. Welcome to this episode of Mysteries with a History. We will be taken on a wild ride into the unknown, the strange, and the mysterious. Like you, I have questions, and like you, I want answers. And with each episode together, we will peel away the layers to look for the truth. Let me bring in my co-host, Jimmy Church, a fade of Black Radio. I'm back. Jimmy, I'm back. I missed you. I'm back. I'm back. I miss. I missed you and all of you. Uh, but you know, it's uh, it's all about the journey and getting out there and seeing things that I always talk about and I interview guests and you and I talk about and, and everything, but uh, going out there and, and physically getting challenged, <laughs> which is what it's about. Um, it, and it, it was just an incredible trip to Peru and, and it's great to be back with you on mysteries with the history. And not only that, but for you to, uh, Christina, uh, to go, you know what, let's, let's talk about Peru. Yes, I, I think that's a great idea. That's why I'm out there doing it, right? So uh, it was a great trip. I saw some amazing things. It was it was just insane. So I've got a a, a pretty good lineup of uh, stuff to share with everybody and some stories, and and I'm interested as the host for your questions. So well, and where, and where your interest is. Well, the first question is, obviously, you've been researching Peru for decades. You've spoken to hundreds of people about Peru. So going there for the very first time, how would you compare it or how would you explain it to someone that's never been? It's only seen documentaries and photos. Yeah, it, th that's a that's an excellent question because I was wondering the same thing myself. And I can, I'm still unpacking a lot uh, from the journey, uh, Christina, and I, and I have to be straight about that. It was just tremendously spiritual. But uh, what, 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 what really, I'm just going to say it like in a, just a basic way, what really blew my mind, dude, right, is, is that it's, it's everywhere, it's everywhere. So just like Egypt and, you know, when you look at uh, Mexico and Guatemala, Honduras and Belize uh, and Central America with the Mayan stuff and and the Aztec and the pyramids and things where it's everywhere, um, just like Egypt, where it's everywhere, uh, Peru is a singular situation just like Egypt. And it's everywhere we there are thousands of sites okay and you only have so much time but when you go from site to site to site and you're standing there and you just look around and you see something else and you see something else it's it's insane but it's only in peru so when you look at south america wrap your head around this for a second You've got Argentina, Chile, Paraguay, Uruguay, Ecuador, Venezuela, Colombia, Brazil, right? They don't have any of this. It's really a strange situation where the country of Peru is concentrated with these ginormous megalithic sites. And, and we know about Pumapunku and we, knew, we know about Machu Picchu. There is, and, and the Nazca lines, right? And the Peruvian mummies and, and, and we know about that, the, the elongated skulls and, and Paracas, which I saw all of this stuff and I just saw mummies. Um, but it's the megalithic sites that cover, in some cases, a couple of thousand acres of uh, built from rocks as big as a house that are perfect, as big as a house perfectly shaped and carved and you just look from side to side as far as the eye can see these structures it's absolutely incredible but it's only in peru why you know and it's, it's like the the million dollar question right well i was there i saw it and it's incredible 
I only have to correct you on one thing. And Jimmy, I almost never correct you. But here on this channel, we don't measure thing in, things in acres. No, we measure them in football fields. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So imagine that, right? So when you go to uh, something like uh, the Nazca lines, where we have all seen the images, right? And, and, you know, the monkey and the tarantula and the spider and and, and the space dude that's waving and, and uh, the hummingbird, you, you know, we've seen the. But when you fly over it in a plane, you're not walking, you're not in a car, you're in a plane covering big distances. And as far as the eye can see outside of the window of the plane, you're looking at lines and drawings from horizon to horizon. And how many football fields is that? It's tens of thousands. It's yeah. that big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not two football fields. Tens of thousands. It's it's incredible. It's just See, that kind of measurement. I can wrap my head around a lot easier than an acre. <laughs> it's uh, it's it, it's crazy. It's crazy. So uh, yeah, that that if I'm gonna wrap it up into one statement, it's that it there's something magical about Peru that these ancient civilizations knew about. And it didn't. It didn't spread. It did. It's not in other countries. You don't go to Paraguay to go see thousands of megalithic sites. No, or Brazil. It's uh, Venezuela, Colombia, Argentina, Chile. No, it's just in Peru. It's strange. Not just that, Jimmy, but you went at such a fantastic time when Peru was receiving so much media coverage. We. In the recent months, we saw the Nazca mummies coming out during the Mexican UFO hearing. And then also during the summer was the alleged alien Peruvian attacks right. uh, where they have been classified, at least by the local myths, as the pilacara. So that peel off the people's faces. And in, in, in it's like a two pronged statement slash question. Right before you had left, you had on Timothy, who was, would be classified as an expert when it comes to these recent um, Peruvian attacks, again, during the summer. But when you were in Peru, and I know people are probably asking you this a lot in DMs or in comments, did you happen to go near that area by chance? No, that's uh, deep in the Amazon jungle. I did not. And you're speaking about, of course, Timothy Albarino. Yes. And uh, trust me when I say this, as I was going around Peru, uh, I was constantly thinking about uh, Timothy Alberino and his statements and his experiences there. Because uh, not only with those uh, alleged alien attacks, and I believe that uh, th th that was a real situation, it's an ongoing situation. Um, Timothy's knowledge, right? And so he he mentioned uh, the Amare uh, uh, culture a lot. And I hung out with many uh, Amare uh, 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 people there. And Pumapunku and Titicaca and Tiumanaku, that area uh, in the city of Puno, which is oh, just incredible, by the way. Um, on the southern edge of Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. That's all Amare. That's all Amare. That is the culture that is there. And it's a very unique culture. Uh, beautiful people. Uh, uh, more on that in just a minute. But uh, meeting them and seeing things like Tiwanaku and Pumapunku, I was constantly referencing that conversation I had with Timothy Alberino and those people and the possibility of alien contact because you see it everywhere. Uh, you see the evidence, you see uh, images. Uh, you, it's just very strange. I'm going to show you some uh, images in a second of not only what may be aliens um, in, in indigenous carvings, uh, but uh, some pillars that I found, well, th that th were always there, that are very similar to Gobekli Tepe uh, and the tea pillars and the carving and what they represent. And I'm looking at those and I'm thinking to myself, 
ET, somebody, there was contact in the distant past there a lot. And the evidence is everywhere that you look. And the statements from Timothy Alberino and others that have uh, done the research down there, including, you know, for instance, uh, Giorgio Sukalos, who says Pumapunku is the most important site and evidence of something strange going on in the distant past. And that combined with the Nazca mummies, and I'm going to pull up some images here in a second. Um, uh, I'm scrolling through of a mummy uh, that I videoed and uh, photographed uh, in person, and which was just absolutely incredible. And I've got these ready to go. Um, this, uh, uh, this, this mummy that I'm about to show you, which, it, it, look, everybody wants to know about aliens and ET contact in Peru. Yeah, I get that. So do I. So Brian took us uh, deep into the mountains uh, to this little town uh, where this archaeologist uh, who has a little museum, very small village, uh, but very famous for their uh uh, jewelry making and silver and and stones and geology and so uh we go there to see this mummy and the mummy little backstory i'll make this really quick because i know everybody wants to see these images um the peruvian government sued the archaeologist uh that i met um uh to get possession of this mummy and they lost. He won uh, the lawsuit. So he has the mummy. Brian Forrester, um, the mummy is only on display. Uh, he, he keeps it locked up. It's in a safe, right? At <laughs> an undisclosed location. But it, it, he will bring it out uh, for Brian and uh, unique situations, which is what happened here. Uh, I was able to see it. Now, it was in a glass case, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm this close, as you are about to see. Um, and this is absolutely incredible. So uh, as you look at this, this is what you need to know. This is a, a child uh, uh, between one and a half and two years old. It's a baby. The mummy itself, you're going to see the images, but the mummy itself is about this tall. But the head is about half of the mummy, one and a half to two years old. But it's got a full set of adult teeth. Okay? Now, yes, yes. Think about that. It's also, uh, it only has 10 ribs. We have 12. Very unique. Uh, it's in situ, it's intact, and here it is. So, um, the as you look at these images, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show show them all to you. Uh, take special note of the eyes. Okay, so what you're looking at here that looks big. It's only this tall. It's about a foot foot and a half tall. But the head is is half of it. And you can see the ribs here. You can see the ribs on the other side. There's 10 ribs, not 12. Um, uh, you can see its arm here. It, that's the bottom of its spinal cord. It does not have its legs. Okay. Um, but look at the teeth. Look at that. This is one and a half years old. That's pretty wild. That's pretty wild. And 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 then the eye sockets. So this is the other side. Again, you can see the ribs. And you can see the teeth. Look at that. Look at that. Now, the when you look at this uh, skull, and you can see, obviously, the proportion where the eyes are, you know, the, the skull. This is upright, right? Okay, so the eye, the, the skull is... In proportions, like this, uh, half of the skull is forehead, and then the other half, uh, uh, the lower third, I would say, are the eyes and the eye sockets. So, um, 
that is just absolutely incredible. The, you can see the hole um, that is with the newborn child at birth uh, has not filled in. So that's the indication right there that it's, it's still about one and a half years old. Uh, the sutures have not uh, sealed up and they're all open. Um, but now look at look at this. I do want to give people a little bit of context referring to the teeth. I did. I needed to look it up. So a baby can get it, start getting their teeth between four and seven months. And they usually finish with the majority of their teeth by the age of three. However, they don't usually get their molars until the age of six. In this yeah. case, for this thing, um, it's believed to be a year and a half, two years old, and it's already having molars, to my understanding. Full, a full adult teeth. Look, 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 look. Look at that. Yeah, which you shouldn't be getting until, again, about the age of six. Now, now wisdom teeth are a different story altogether. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, now, when you look at this skull, and we'll, we'll get to some other stuff here, uh, it, but, but this, this to me was one of the most mind-blowing uh, experiences of my entire life, let alone this uh, Peru trip. This was high up on the scale of just what? You know, because you got to remember, this is just a tiny little, it's it's this big. It's this big. It's so small. And, and so when you look at it straight on, this is straight on into the face. Just, just this, this, this baby was alive with this head shape and look at the size of the eye sockets they're ginormous and in proportion to everything else and he's got a couple of other skulls there and you look at those where everything is just normal just looks like a normal skull i don't have any in here um i would hold one up uh i do have skulls in the house um uh, and, and when you look at uh, you know, a normal human situation, that's not what you see here. Now, there's something else that's really obvious. There's no eyebrows. There's no bones. Okay, so you can feel, and when you see on a normal human skull, you know, you, you've got this, this ridge above the eye socket, right? We all have that. It's not here. It's a very, 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 very strange thing to see in person. Um, I think I have, did I just do that? Let me see. Yeah, this is another, this is an extreme close-up. Well, uh, people I, I, are asking some important questions that I, I know that you sure. can definitely answer. And Adam, thank you for that. And Android is asking here, what was the name of the mummy or name of the museum? Also, has anyone done genetic testing on it? And yes. are those results public? Yes. Okay. So, um, yes. And I may have, uh, an interview, uh, with, uh, with Brian. Um, let me pull, let me pull up this. Let me scroll down. Brian discusses the, uh, man, I've got so many movies, man. I've got just so many movies. Uh, Brian discusses that, and he says that there were four DNA tests done, and the uh, by uh, uh, American universities, Russian, uh, Peruvian, and I, I believe the fourth was Canadian, um, all showing the same general situation, and and this is it, it's this. The DNA does show partially human. The mitochondria side, uh, the um, uh, the mother side, the female side of the DNA, unknown, 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 not in the in in the genome. And four tests that were done. Okay, um, it's uh, it's just an incredible sight. It's an incredible thing to see in person. I, I really can't uh, put it into words. Um, here, I have an interview uh, with a doctor. So let me play this. Um, we had two doctors that were with us um, on the tour. And uh, hold on for a second. Let me pause this. 
And then I've got to uh, pull this up on the screen. So just stay with me. Boom, done. And so she is, this is an ER doctor, okay, physician. Um, also on the tour with this was a surgeon, uh, uh, a GI gastro uh, surgeon uh, from Lithuania. I also have an interview with him. But listen to her comments uh, about this. So here we go. My name is Elizabeth Burks. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, USA, and I'm an emergency physician. Excellent. So, Elizabeth, this is the Waikiki skeleton found near the little town of Andawailias here in the highlands of Peru. Could we have your professional opinion on what you were looking at? Uh, I feel that I am looking at a humanoid who was a hybrid of a non-humanoid because this this um, child has this very elongated skull, open fontanelle, the structure of the eyes, the orbits, and the facial features are compressed and this seems to be a very young child, one and a half, two, and has full dentition of an older child. How old would you suggest the well, dentition would be? Seeing that I'm not a dentist, but I would say that with the posterior mm -hmm. teeth that have erupted, this child probably has dentition of an eight to 10 year old. Oh, okay. Those are molars. Right. Also, it has two sets of ribs less Left than side. a homo sapiens right. sapiens. I think it has 12 or 10 and we have 12. 12, correct. It also looks like the rib cage is upside down. It does look unusual, yes. With it being so compressed, it's hard. And I can't touch it. I can't tip it up. I can't move it around. But it does look unusually um, orientated. So it is possible that the internal organs are not in the same position as a homo sapien sapien? Correct. Does it look manufactured in any way? Does it look put together no, or this, assembled? No, this looks, this looks authentic to me. Intact? Yes, intact. It has not been manipulated. Yeah, because some people have suggested that it's made up of different body parts from different beings but i've held it in my hands and it is one being now my comments in seeing this is the skull and the face are very very small you see this in video and photographs it appears bigger like it's a, an That's adult true. it is not very small. very small but those eye sockets Really I don't have a better word for it, so I'm just going to say ginormous, right? I don't have an in proportion to the, the nose and the mouth. The eye sockets are just, they dominate the entire face. And do you have a comment on that, on, on how that could be if it was some kind of deformity or that this was just the way that the DNA was instructing to grow up this this was what this child was supposed to be incredible unfortunately i can't get to the back i can't see the spine i can't see the you know but the the skull is out of proportion to the face and the eye sockets are out of proportion to the face now next next question is so oh, I, I, I I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stop it because uh, it, it's a long interview. We've got a lot to cover, but how incredible when you see that, Christina, what goes through your mind? There's definitely a lot of questions, and maybe one of them is, do we have an idea of when that baby entity thing was alive? I mean, was it carbon dated by chance to kind of give us like hundred years ago, thousand years ago? Yeah, uh, the dating uh, is is about a thousand years old. 
it's about a thousand. Um, I can get the, the exact dates, but that those were the numbers uh, that were uh, presented because um, it was found. Okay, it was found in a royal tomb. Okay, of nobility. It was also buried facing west. And there is a reason for that, um, but uh, uh, the the burial uh, of royal mummies, uh, the sun sets in the west. That is represents death, right? In in older cultures, um, you know, the sun dies, right, and then rises in the east, where it is reborn every day. So. You different cultures bury, um, have buried their nobility and, and others, right, uh, facing east or west. So, um, but in this tomb, uh, other things were also carbon dated, and it was found in a, in a royal tomb in this little town by the owner of, of the mummy. Yeah, it's incredible. He's an old. It, it, the mummy was found about forty years ago. By the way, this uh, um, it wasn't last week. This isn't a recent discovery with the other Nazca mummies and the stuff that uh, in in uh, Cusco, uh, which, by the way, beautiful city. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it was just it was just incredible. It's, I mean, look, we've all seen the images, right? When you see it in person, when you see something like this in person where nothing makes sense, the ribs are pointing in the wrong direction, right? Our ribs go down, right? Those ribs go up. They're they're backwards, the curve. <laughs> it's like it's like weird, man. And you're just like it's just it just doesn't make any sense, and and uh, like I, like Brian said, there, there's only ten ribs. Uh, we have twelve. There's a lot of lot of things about this. Now, uh, I specifically asked the doctor, and then we can move on. Uh, both doctors, actually, uh, about mutations. Um, is it possible that there was some disease or mutation that would cause? the organs to be in a different place, the ribs to reshape, a rib count, the eyes, the sockets, the mo and it's like, no, no, there's no, 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 no. They were very perplexed to see, to see somebody who is a surgeon or, um, you know, Elizabeth here, who is, uh, she is an ER physician. She's a doctor. She runs an ER, uh, department, uh, to see her face, like, what it's, you know, somebody that's gone through eight, 10, 12 years of med school, right? And this surgeon where they they understand human anatomy, they know what they're looking at, and then to see them, you know, like look at this, and it, it just they were very um they were spending a lot of energy trying to uh understand because their brain they've been trained right and suddenly they're seeing something that was completely unfamiliar to them um it was it was pretty wild and what museum was this in uh you have to listen uh to brian don't don't put me on don't don't, don't throw well, me under well, the, the reason why i'm bringing that up is because the museum that you visited there are a handful of other skulls that have a long that are elongated as well and uh -huh. when when you were at the museum even if you had a tour guide if it was just brian or like like just even reading the, the little descriptions of like each artifact Right. What was the overall description to these elongated heads? Was it just okay. done by tribal right. practice? Or all was right. It all right. All right. You want to go there? I've got it. You want to see it? Yes. All right. So this is uh, the famous uh, 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 Ica Museum. And let me see what I have here. Okay, you asked for it, you got it. Okay, so there you go. Now, this is in the Paracas Museum uh, in uh, Paracas. And then next, I will show you. Now, you can see here, 
right? There it is. It's This is in a museum. And uh, this is the first museum that we visited. And so uh, they definitely 100% stay in their lane, right? So on the walls, they have pictures of boarding and, and how the process is done. Okay. All right. So that answers that question. And then we went to another museum. And let me pull that image up, or images, and with a complete display of skulls, uh, different from the Paracas Museum. The Paracas Museum, very small, in and out in, in 10 minutes, right? It's, it, it's in the middle of the desert, by the way, 13,000 feet, whatever, um, uh, 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 in the mountains. But then we went to the Ica Museum. And this was mind blowing because here now, um, as I show you this, uh, to Brian's delight, there was never photography allowed in this museum. Okay. This is Brian's first visit back to the museum post COVID. So they went through three years of no tourism and the museum was closed. So now it's reopened and uh, we get to go in and they tell, they tell, Brian says no photography, no videos, but uh, the, the skulls are incredible. Let's go and check this out. So we go in and the guards go, no, no, all the video and pictures you can take. <laughs> so I, that's all I needed to hear. All right. So this is the first display case. And you can see right there, the Paracas culture, right? Okay, now get ready. There's a whole row of skulls right there. And to see these in order, right, they're all labeled. This is in a museum. Now, I want you to note, there's your sutures, right? Okay, normal. That's a normal situation. Then we have this guy. No sutures. All right. Look at this. No sutures. That's an I've interesting got, detail. And I've got, uh, uh, again, see see the sutures? That's a normal human, right? That's a normal situation. But this, to have skulls, to have humans born without, look, look, no sutures on that skull. None. It's, it's, it's a, and again, I got to tell you, this is real. This is not, you know, manufactured. This isn't 3D printing. This isn't somebody's sculpture. This is a human that walked the planet. And to have one of the, the, the most common features, we have five fingers, we got five toes, we've got sutures. Right? That's it's just what these are the facts of life. This is anatomy. And then to have something like this, it just doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense. If you had not pointed it out, I don't think I would have noticed in the yeah. sense of looking at that aspect of it. And I think other people might agree to that. But this is something that is interesting because let's say they these during this time a thousand years ago, they were practicing boarding boarding skulls because they're very they're more malleable when a child is just newly born. There's their bones are really squishy. You can do something like this, but that it it will not negate those those lines that you had mentioned on the skull, at least to my knowledge. Now I could be no, wrong. Right. I do not have no, a medical no, you're degree. Not wrong. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. So this is an example of a boarded skull right here. And you can see the formations of it and how it was done. This is, it's a different shape and everything else. And there's the suture marks on the top. But when you look at something like this, it doesn't have not only the evidence of boarding, but there's no sutures anywhere on the skull. The skull is completely smooth. It's uh, it's it's I, again, I can't I can't put it into words to see 
uh, what it's like to see this in person. It's it's unbelievable. It's it's perplexing, and uh, I you know this is uh, an example of uh, in, in my opinion. There's the suture marks. Brain surgery. Right, which has been practiced for thousands of years, yeah, yeah. Uh, including in Egypt as well, yep. um, which is yep. which, you know, is crazy, um, to be honest yes. with you. But Mind Forked is saying, is that similar or the same as Wawita baby found with Maria? Also great stuff. Uh, yeah, um, I'm going to leave that alone for now. Um, uh, I think that there are some questions about uh, Maria's baby. And so until more evidence comes out, um, uh, certainly with DNA, uh, I'm putting her, the baby, Maria is still on the front burner for me. Uh, we, we still need more study to go on. But there, are, there have been some serious questions raised about the baby. I put the baby on the back burner. Okay. So this, these elongated skulls, before we move on, because there's still so much to cover, but it reminds me of Akhenaten and the sculpture of his daughter, who also had a very elongated skull as well. That's where my mind goes. Um, but we don't have the, the skeletons, we only have the sculptures and renditions of that. But it's just something that, first of all, it's it's a it's not necessarily a unique practice. The, like the sense of the practice of boarding or elongating a baby's skull has been practiced usually with royalty more than anyone else. But is that just a story and not the truth? That's the difficult thing when it comes to this. And I think in some respects, it might be legitimate where maybe, and I'm just thinking outside of the box here, maybe these entities that had elongated skulls, the tribemen, the tribalmen wanted to follow them. They They saw how, amazing they were and they said okay i want my child to have an elongated head and maybe they did start practicing it after seeing it with their own eyes now is that the case it's something worth thinking about because sure. in, in in some elongated skulls you are able to see those sutures but the ones that you had demonstrated you didn't and i need it's, it's i need a crazy. doctor to give me an explanation i'm on telling that. you i'm telling you, you, you so you're standing there christina you're standing there. You're looking at skulls right next to each other. Suture, no suture. And you, you know, and you're looking at, and by the way, these, these are big. Okay. Normal human skull, you know, size of a softball, right? Like that. And you're looking at the skull. And it's like a foot and a half, two feet. And it it's, it's, I'm telling you, your brain just scrambles. So now you brought up Maria. So I was going through the museum, and here is a mummy. A couple of things. Red hair, by the way. Very strange. I, I found very strange. Um, but uh, look at her position. Very similar to Maria. Right. Very similar. And uh, But uh, the things that are unsimilar, Maria's got skin. Okay? Skin. You can see it. You can see the skin all over. Um, here you can see it's a different situation. You can see the bone, the skin's there, but you see, uh, it's all down to the bone now. And Maria is different. She's more whole and intact. And here you can clearly see, you know, five toes, five fingers and, and all of that. Well, four fingers and a thumb. Um, but Maria's got three and just appears, uh, different. It's more whole, more intact with uh, with the way the skin is covered and and everything else in the face. So I, I thought that that was interesting, and that's why I grabbed this particular shot from that view. Um, very, very interesting. It. I'm so glad that we spent time on that aspect because people were asking questions, and it's on a lot of people's minds as well, especially when it came to the. Mexican UAP hearing one in September and then one in November. But getting on to our next aspect, and one, of course, that we simply have to talk about, and that is the portal, right? The gate of the gods. You oh, you yeah, went there, yeah, you took yeah, pictures, I did. I did. and you also had a rather interesting experience. But before we get to the personal aspect, sure. can you tell us a little bit of the history and why it's classified as a portal, at least based on the stories? Yeah. Um, okay. So... Uh, let me show you 
Um, let me pull this up here. Let me. I've got a movie that I haven't shown anybody yet. So let me pull this up. I got to turn it down um, so I can talk over it. Okay. So what Christina is referring to is a site called Amaru Muru. And it, uh, I have studied this over the years. It's, uh, especially in our circles, it is a very, very, very famous, uh, place. And, uh, it's, it's carved into the side of, uh, a, a mountain. It's one piece of stone and it's a doorway that doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So uh, that's what it looks like when you first see it. And the story, some of the backstory behind it, I'll keep it very brief because uh, I know everybody wants to see the video and the images that somebody uh, would get into that area right there, say a phrase, and disappear. Okay? Teleport. And now, and I've seen and I've heard the stories uh, over the years. And for me to actually, when, when I walked up, this is me shooting this video. When I walked up and I turned and I saw this, my heart, I mean, I just, I, I was finally there. And I never thought that I would ever have an opportunity uh, to, to go to a place like this, which is in the middle of nowhere, by the way, it's just with a little village, uh, that is next to it. Um, so let me pull this down and, uh, next let's see here. I have another video here. I think it's of the ceremony. Um, but, uh, so, so I did, I, I went through, um, uh, we had a shaman with us and, uh, I was able to, uh, do the ceremony, uh, with him and he, uh, there's the burning of things. There's, uh, uh, uh an entire spiritual ritual that is done and performed, and then I was invited uh, to go up and and uh, sit in the portal. So, and then I'll get to that in just a second. This is another view I shot from the other side. I just wanted everybody to see that. Now, um, going to the images. So, the images of uh, this particular site will show you exactly how everything went down um, and the position. And I want to show, uh, and you can go and look at Amaru, Amaru Muru, that's two words, M-U-R-U, -U, Amaru Muru, and read the stories and the history uh, behind this site, and it will give you, it's a great rabbit hole uh, to go down. It's, it's, it's uh, unbelievable. And so with that knowledge of, of going through this and for me to have the opportunity to go through the ritual and, and do this, I, I can't tell you how excited I was. Um, now, here is, uh, 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 these, these are all high-res images. This is as I am approaching. Um, uh, Wilco has gone through and done the ceremony. Now, I want you to take a look here. This is what's going on. You see that notch right there? Yes. That's where you put your forehead. You place a hand here. You place a hand here. You put your knees here, and you place your forehead here. After you do that, then you place your hands. You can see it where it's worn out, and it's worn out. And you put your hands against the wall, and you rest your forehead um, onto the portal. You can see all the forehead grease on there. I thought it was to place the key. If there was a key, that right, was as, right. at least as the legend goes, um, because this, and I just want to give people like a, a just a, a brief explanation of the gates of the gods, how the story goes. Again, just a, a, a lay a foundation for those that aren't familiar with it, because it was discovered in 1996 near Lake Titicaca, and it's steeped in Incan mythology and spiritual lore, as Jimmy had just mentioned. He even did a ritual there. But what's unique about it is that as the story goes, at least, there was a Peruvian priest who went there, and 
he had this he said the magic word or he had a magic key the story kind of varies and then people saw him enter that portal and then never return and so it's believed that on the other side is to achieve immortality or to be with the gods and it's for ancient heroes as well um but to my understanding and jim you'll have a better Probably I do. a better I, I, story than I do on this, but has I, anything happened since? Okay, so um, Jorge Luis Delgado uh, made the discovery of this. He's been on Fade to Black. I have met him in person. I've done a couple of conferences with him. Um, he is a shaman, and uh, he's also a Mare. Uh, we were talking about that. Uh, he's from the Amare culture. Um, and uh, uh, Pretty pretty famous guy in the area. He owns also uh, uh, four or five hotels. I mean, five-star hotels. Um, but he's a tremendous researcher. And, and he's a great guy. And he is the one that made the discovery in 1995. But, it, it, but now let's get into the serious insight here. The village, the Amari village that is down in front of this, this is about an hour uh, maybe two hours away from uh, Titicaca. It's it's uh, Titicaca is huge, but this is um, uh, not next to the lake. Okay, this is off. Anyway, there's a village there that has been continuously uh, lived in for thousands of years, and that uh, shaman that you refer to that happened hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And that is part of the uh, story behind this that Jorge discovered in talking to the village elders about the history of this site and what it is. Now, now here's part two. Yes, the shaman, the priest said something. There wasn't a physical key. Okay, now, I've talked to the locals there. I've done my best to find out the information. And I can say this. I've been there. Okay. So listen, this is a, that uh, 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 it wasn't a key. He said something and he disappeared and never returned. Nobody wrote it down. I would take that. Nobody gamble knows. So quick. Right, 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 right. And, and, and so people have been going up saying whatever, open sesame, you know, whatever it is, you know, for years trying to, to get back to the secret knowledge um, to, from what I understand, it has never happened again. There was one person, uh, his name is Jerry Wills, and you can go and read about his experience. He says he hummed, like he hummed three different tones and he was teleported, um, but he's still around to tell the story. So I'm not, so sure about that but his story is a pretty famous one okay but that's not what's interesting what is the most important point about this is on the other side of that doorway is a cave a tunnel and that extends through the mountain and the entrance is on the other side the back side of this hill it's all one piece of rock by the way hundreds of years ago after the priest disappeared other people started to disappear and the cave on the back side was sealed up because people were going into that cave not dying and they, they were retrieving their bodies they were entering that cave and disappearing so the village sealed it off you cannot enter that cave and the villagers that are there this is their property Peru can't change it. This is an indigenous culture and this is tribal land and that's it. They have sealed it off. Nobody is allowed to enter the cave. And isn't that interesting? And the cave uh, again, I uh, don't know. Uh, nobody has been in there. Uh, archaeologists in a modern sense, but it it's goes to the backside of this door that you're looking at. Now, here I I, go. I, I would go over. I would go there so quick. Uh, Laurie yeah, yeah. and Cassidy, thank you so much for that and for supporting the channel. Jimmy's looking snazzy in this picture right here. Jimmy's looking yeah. concerned. Trust me, I was vibing. I was vibing. Okay, so here I am. 
So uh, you can see here my forehead. I just, uh, I didn't obviously take these pictures, uh, but I'm getting into position. I'm doing as instructed. And uh, there you go. And now I'm placing my hands. You can see see the marks, right? It's, yeah, like yeah, the scratch it's, marks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. It's pretty friggin' wild. And uh, and then, boom, there I am. I've got my head in, in the keyhole that you call it. And I, I, I did this for about, I'm going to say two or three minutes. Two or three minutes. That's a long time. It was. Now, look. Okay, so now I turn around. Look at my face. I'm like. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, you just put your forehead with a bunch of other people's forehead sweat. I I was uh, I was I was certainly uh, in a daze and uh, and just turning around and looking at the sun and and the uh, the other side. This is one of the Amare women. That's the town in the background. It's just a little village, right? And and look at her face, man. Is she cool or what? Look She's awesome. Well, Jimmy, when when you were when you were having that moment with yes. the gate of the gods, there, what was going through your mind during and after? Not going to talk about it. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Going to do it. I will say um, it's 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 you would have the same answer. Okay, if you went there and did it, and then somebody turned around and said, "Okay, so so what happened?" You're going, man, well, that's 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 for me to know, uh, and I'm going to leave that right there. But I I'll say this: after I got up and uh, uh, and completed things, we were all standing there. I was a bit I was a bit confused. Uh, I'll say that it was it was a strange experience. But anyway. All of a sudden, and I'm standing in front of, from, it started in my feet, this tingle, like electricity, started to come up my legs, and then it just, like, my whole body uh, was electrified, and it lasted for minutes. <laughs> I turned, Christina, there was somebody standing next to me, and I go, you feel that? And she goes, Yes. And did you feel and that just, any other time during no, during your no. trip? Because it's such high elevation. And of course, a lack of oxygen can create that kind of staticky feeling in the body. Nah, I did I did high elevation for three weeks and 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 no, no, no. It was only this one moment in front of that. And it was it was it was cool, but it was uncontrollable and it was very strange. You know that that feeling. Um I was talking about this last night on the show. Um, the feeling that you get when, like, when you almost trip and fall, but you don't, and you go through that adrenaline rush, or you almost, you know, you almost get in a car accident, whoo, right? You almost weave off the road, whoo, right? It was like that, that, wow, that, that, that intense electrified adrenaline thing, you know, when your body just goes through that high, I high attention, you know, emergency status. It was like that, but it lasted for minutes. It was like, oh, oh man. Yeah, that it was is, really that cool. is pretty odd. Yeah, it was, right, it was cool. Right now, we have 592 people watching this live and 329 likes. If you're enjoying the show, hit that like button. It lets us know you're enjoying the show. And it says, hey, YouTube, we want more content like this. But Jimmy, what's fascinating and, and, well, probably one of my favorite photos that you shared on social media, and you took, I would say, hundreds of photos when Thousands, you were, yeah. but specifically hundreds of photos when you were looking at the, these melted stones. And now we've done the Mysteries of Peru before. We've done a whole show on it, and we went into detail. Oh, yeah. You can see about, those. Yeah, you're talking Go about sexy, sexy woman. Sexy yeah. who am I? Yeah. Is it a sexy who? I don't know how you no, pronounced no. it. But. Sexy woman. Like sexy ramen. I can't remember that you one. Could, you know what? Sexy ramen. You could say that in Peru and they would know what you were talking about. That sounds about right. Sexy. I, I got to think about that. So, yeah, if you look at the way it's spelled, you want to say sex. Hey, ramen. 
No, that's no, 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 no. Sexy, sexy woman. Well, sexy woman or sexy ramen, as I prefer. Yeah, but say, when, say ramen is good. Yeah, that's when, gonna, you, <laughs> when you were there, you took a lot of photos getting I into did. the nitty gritty of those walls and how the rock looked like it, it melted into place perfectly. And these are ancient, ancient structures, the more modern ones, which are still a thousand years old, they look crappily put together but these the original structure and if you people if you haven't seen it you need to look at it and jimmy's going to share us share some photos right now with us but it's one that baffles the mind for the time period even today they look like squishy marshmallows but these are sturdy walls sturdy rocks some a few tons in weight but they're kind of poofy. They fit in the perfect little crevices. Some even have eight sides to it. It's unbelievable. And now we know it's in sexy ramen in Peru. Yeah. Um, let me. Uh, okay. Um, I have an interview uh, as well here. But uh, let me let me just pull this up. This is after I, I forgot. This is after I was below. You know what? Let me ah, screw it. I'll just do this now because I have a I have a shot from above. But this is what Christina is referring to. This is one of the biggest, most ginormous thing. You know, you think of the Great Pyramid. This dwarfs the Great Pyramid in its size. Um, it this uh, uh, sexy woman is nineteen hundred football fields okay let me say that again 1900 football fields okay that's it's nuts it's nuts and so uh i don't know what i'm going to show you but here you go And each one of these stones, uh, you uh, like that stone that right here, these corners, uh, it's a zigzag. It's, it's like a snake. That is 30 feet tall. Okay, it's 30 feet. That's not. And each one fits into another. And now I, I'm just trying to look, look, look at that. 15, 20 feet tall. Yeah, 15, 20 feet tall, uh, I say here. Um and so let me see how much of this video is left. Okay. So um, this stretches, I, I, I don't know what the count is, but it's tens of thousands of these stones. And there's three walls high. It's not just the one I'm at. at. There's another one above me. And then there's another one above that. Um, and each one is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You can see the small fill-in areas where uh, uh, the Inca culture came in and and did some. Say hello. That's Teo. He's the archaeologist. Uh, he's absolutely amazing. And uh, I. Big. Teo. Huge. Really huge. <laughs> Tao six feet tall. So it'll give you an idea of the size of this. It's just absolutely incredible. It's, a, it's just insane to see this in person. You can see it. Yeah. And I have more. So let me uh, let me pull this down and you just stay right there. And let's go to the next. Let's see what this is here. Everybody, I've got literally. Okay, Teo. Oh, okay, okay. Now, here you go. This is this is a special treat. So Teo is a PhD archaeologist of 40 years, got his training here in the United States. Um, he has studied, this is his favorite site. Um, now, as you look at this, see that zigzag right here? See yes. that? Okay. I, that's where I was just filming. I was walking around one of these corners right here. Okay. Those are people. 
Now, this stretches. Now, just watch. We are one of the most major me megalithic sites on planet Earth. As uh, we look down into this section of Saxe Waman, what are we actually looking at? We are looking at what might be the head of the sacred design of the city of Cusco. The three walls here, which are like the zigzags, represent the snake, represent the lining, represent the movement of water, and also represent the mouth of the koa, who was this sacred cat. So Satsi woman was the head, and all down back was the body of the of the koa, which is this kind of a small size cut, and uh, in the end of the city there is a small street even today that keeps the name, which is Puma Chupang, which means the tail of the puma. Just look at the size; it's it's insane. So many Christina. people has been calling this for more than four hundred years after the Spaniards arrived the fortress of Saxe woman. And now it's more stronger than the theory that it was the most important and sacred temple for all these cultures, including the last one who were the Incas. So they were here before other people. And how we can prove this, of course, doing some diggings and uh, more studies, but there has been found a lot of dif different, a lot of different paraphernalia from Tiahuanaco, from Nazca, from Moche that has been bringing all the way here to offer it. Look at those. That's a that's a class of school children, right? Um, all going up and touching. But now, so uh, look at. Look at the size of the stone that they're in front of. It's if you're looking, it's, it's it's as big as a house, you know. And you're looking, and, and all you can do is ask the obvious question: How the heck did this get here? Are those stones local to the area? No, they come from about ten miles away, and not only ten miles away, ten miles of hills. Right. And 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 so just imagine uh, uh, I don't know where you live, Christina. I don't. I don't. Never been there. Haven't seen it. But I'm assuming you're in college. So you're in some dormitory setting or maybe an apartment, I, you know, a house, whatever. Imagine where you're dwelling. Solid stone in front of you being moved over hills thousands of years ago that's that's what you're looking at here look at the size of now now but that's not if if it was only this one rock right th that we were talking about okay all right no we're talking about thousands of them thousands look to the left and to the right of these kids Look, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, 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 here. And that's one notch of that zigzag. That's just one notch. You look down into the valley and you look at these notches and you say to yourself, this, this right here doesn't make any sense. So... How uh, the first and the obvious question, and, and I get it, is how were they formed? How were they formed? How were they cut? Well, if you go and you uh, start to assume a couple of things when you're standing in front of this, and I'm going to bust uh, some pictures out for you in a row. Um, it, I, I, it, I'm of the uh, suspicion 
I guess is the word that I want to use here, uh, the suspicion of uh, there was some kind of heat that um, if you, if you, if you, if you, man, I, I just don't want to sound so, so juvenile or so elemental in, in what I'm about to say. But if you get, if you're baking some biscuits, right? You're baking biscuits. Christine is in the kitchen. She's going to make some biscuits. I've and you get your best biscuits. And, and you've. <laughs> And you, and you got your pan. You got the oven preheated. And you put the biscuits in the pan. And then you put them in the oven. And then you take them out. What do those biscuits do? They poof up. They expand. And they touch. Right? Perfect seam. Right? Now, that process, that idea is kind of what I'm looking at here. You know what I mean? Where these have expanded into, because to have something like this carved to fit the rock to the left and to the right and to the below, to the you would have to pull it out, recarve it, reshape it, put it back and get it right, put it back. It would take forever. It doesn't make any sense. There's got to be something easier here. Now, I just zoomed in on one rock, right? Every rock here, look at this corner. Look at this. Look at this. That's insane. And this is one little zigzag. Now let's go through this and take a look. Look at the size and the scope. Look at this corner. That's a cornerstone and another cornerstone. Okay. That's, that's pretty impressive. But then that's not. Look at this. See that? See that little notch cut, right? That's to fit this and this and this and this and that. Just that, that, that would, it's impossible. It's impossible. So I would, it's my guess. Okay, that's impressive, right? Yeah, look at my face. Holy crap, right? But that's not what's impressive here. What's impressive is that. That's crazy. That's that's just nuts. That's just nuts. So I went through, I did this constantly. Um, I took selfies with everybody from the tour. So I'll I'll just um let me let me blast past this. Just stay with me. It'd be faster if I just click through. Okay. So one of the this is just a stone I'm walking past. It's just one uh, on, on 1,900 football fields going in both directions. It's one after another. And you just stop and look at the seam of a 50-ton block. <laughs> it's like, what? 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 And I can, I can just continue. Look at this corner. And, and, and I, I need to stress. This corner repeats two dozen times in both directions. And it defies logic as well. I mean, it, why do it like that? Now, I, I, I took this picture uh, for the llamas, right? There's llamas everywhere. Cutest things you've ever seen. But Until that's what's This is Inca. This is megalithic. So the Inca arrived and this everything is done. And they and here they are, and the Incas are pretty badass, by the way. It's an amazing culture. Um, but look at them. That's their version. <laughs> not compare. No, 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 no. So, you know, they did their best. You know, that looks like what I would have done. <laughs> you know, trying to. Uh, but uh yeah, yeah, it's 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 amazing and the um this is another really good example so you're standing there just, just you're just standing there and you just look around christina so i look across this field i take this shot it's a beautiful shot isn't it isn't it it's a great shot but that no no let's take a closer look that is a ginormous megalithic wall 
with the Inca fill in and just look at how all of this is put together, right? That's pretty impressive. But then there it is above. Do you there happen to know the year difference between the two, the old they, structure they and the newer structures? They, they don't. We know when the Inca arrived, okay? But the, the age of the megalithic uh, structure underneath it, um, uh, Brian and others, and this defies logic, and it goes against uh, the grain of conventional archaeology and historians, um, but somewhere older than 12,000 B.C. So... Um, and they pushed it back, you know, 50,000 years. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But, uh, yeah, so when the Incas arrived, we know uh, the dating of that. And the Inca were only around for 200 years. Um, when the Spanish showed up uh, in the 1500s, uh, that was their mission, was to steal all the gold and... And kill all the Inca. And and they did just that. It's a very sad story. But there you go. It's just, it's everywhere you look. It's just, it's just absolutely incredible. Now, uh, I want to show you this. I'm looking at the clock. Okay, so now let me pull this down. And one of my uh, favorite sites that I didn't know anything about until uh, this trip was Morai. And Morai is uh, an ancient amphitheater um, that, okay, hold on, let me pause. Sorry about that. If there is a word uh, to to apply to this, I don't know what it is. Okay, I don't. I I I don't have any way of describing this. But just check this out. And, and so I I walk up and I see those are people. Those are people. I'm zooming in. Look at the size and the scope of this. Now, I'm going to start this video over. I'm sh I'm looking at the, the stair. Those are stairs to enter the amphitheater. Um, you want football fields? Uh, in a second, I will show you some images. But look at those are people. Those aren't ants. Those are people. Look at that. And this is in a meteor crater. Okay, and so the center right here is the bottom of the crater right here. It, it, now, okay, so now I'm going to start this over. Those are stairs. Those are stairs. And to see that, it's uh, it, the engineering and the the size of it. So let me stop it right there. And, you know, let me back this up just a frame. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Is that beautiful? It's insane. And a beautiful way to use a meteor crater as well. I think it's so <laughs> innovative. <laughs> totally. Totally. And now I don't know how many people could fit in uh, this amphitheater. Um, most of the garden seats. Here's the cheap seats above, right? <laughs> the cheap seats. And then come down, you see the stairs, the stairs, the stairs. And I, I was so blown away by that. Look at that. All the way to the main stage. And it's, 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 I don't know if I was going to guess um, when I first looked at the site itself, I can stop it right there. Probably remember the, these are people right there. Okay. So I don't know, but from this back edge to this front edge, it's probably a half a mile. 
you do, know, do we know the purpose that they used it for by it's chance? An it's, an it's, it's, a, it's a ceremonial place, you know, and, okay. and that that's it. It's very spiritual. It's very powerful. Um, but the the other part, if if we go back and and look at the historical aspect of this, no paper, no written language that we know of, right? No design capabilities. Where did the engineering and the planning come to build this architecturally and aesthetically perfect site? It's perfect. It's divine. And it's just, you know, and you don't go and build something like this going, okay, so let's build a curve here. Let's build a curve. No, it's no, that this was architecturally and, uh, and the engineering side of this is perfect. And then you have the aesthetic value, the artistic value, you know, that intrinsic thing that you can't touch. You look at this and it is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's just in, it, beautiful. And it, it, I, can you imagine during a ceremony, this packed full of 100,000 people, right? And, and there was an usher somewhere guiding people down the stairs. Okay, you're sitting here, right? You know what I mean? And watching it fill in and the color and the pageantry and the magnificence of it. Um, I can only imagine how how wonderful it was, you know, a couple of thousand years ago. Yeah. Not just that, but during that time frame, everything had a purpose. Things weren't just placed for the good looks or for an aesthetic. Everything had a purpose during that time frame. And, and we've lost that mentality. We've lost that art. But here it's. First of all, I, and I cannot stress enough here, I think it's genius to use a meteor crater to create an amphitheater. OK, that that's brilliant because digging that up would take you a very long time and there's no question about it but when you have the job already done for you a good chunk of it that's working smarter and not harder yeah exactly that is such a great point it's like you walk up you look at the bowl right and you go oh let this, this is what we've been looking for. This is the spot, bro. Let's, you know, this is it. This is perfect. Now, here's an interview uh, I did with Brian Forrester. We are here at the ancient Inca temple of Marai and with Brian Forrester. Now, Brian, mm -hmm. Marai is the modern version of, of the word of what this temple is called uh what's the what's the correct ancient version well the spanish named it Murai because they couldn't pronounce the inca name for it which was muru urai and what that means is temple down or portal down and that's exactly what you're looking at you're looking at a temple that was built rather than up down into the ground the acoustics here are absolutely phenomenal so as jimmy already figured out this was a huge auditorium the, the, it, it is rather obvious brian i'm going to point out a few things to everybody but you can see steps coming down all the way down where you could see where everybody would flow and sit mm -hmm. but this is an amphitheater there's no question about it yeah and there are actually four of them this is the biggest one there are two more over that way, which have not been reconstructed. This has been completely reconstructed. Then up on the hill, there's another tiny little one. But this is the only one that they've been able to reconstruct with incredible effort. It was built by the Inca. There's no megalithic aspect to it. So it was built during Inca times, probably somewhere between... Now, again, we're before we run out of time, how incredible is that? You know, and, and, and Christina, so we drive, we're in a, you know, in our bus, you've seen that TV show, uh, world's most dangerous roads, right? You've seen it. I think so. Okay. Right. That's what we did to get there, you know, crazy passing other, but you know, slowing down and, you know, you're looking down at a 10,000 foot cliff. 
<laughs> She's like, ah! you know, and, and back and forth, back and forth, up, 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 all the way to 13,000 feet on the top of this mountain. We park, we get out, and I walk. You can't see it because it's in this bowl, right? You can't see it. And you just walk up and go, what? What? It's, it's, it's sumptuous. It's just incredible. Just it's 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 perfect. It's just perfect. So I, I did out of everything that everything was great, you know Machu Picchu and and all of yes yes. But this I didn't know anything about, and to just walk up and see it uh, was it was a moment for me. Um, uh, Peru is just it's it's that incredible. And that has to be one of the difficult things when it comes to traveling is either wanting to know everything about the places you're going to visit and and have a have the basic knowledge or going in completely blind and just being astonished at what you see. That's that's one aspect of traveling that I think people can understand and understand the struggle there. So that's why I would say 50-50. Go to some places that you know about and done research on and then wing it a few times because it's always going to be those little cracks in the walls and it's going to have the best food and like no reviews whatsoever but you're going to love the food yeah yeah and i <laughs> the food was incredible there was uh, a moment uh let me pull this up okay you ready this this will this will right now this will uh give you some depth of the impact of seeing something for the first time, okay? So uh, we're the only people here. Uh, we pull up. This is just another site in Peru, okay? But it's not just any other site. This is the famous Sun Gate, all right? In the middle of the mountains, again, 13,000 feet in the middle of nowhere, very remote. And I'm, I'm there first, walking up this path, not knowing what I'm about to see. Are you ready? Yeah. Check this out. Here at the Sun Gate Temple in Peru. I'm the first one through the gate, so get a really good shot. It's massive. This is megalithic and Inca. I'm all alone. This is just. I, you have to excuse my heavy breathing. It is 13,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> just like, but I'm walking up and I'm, I, I'm, I'm filming, but I'm watching at the same time going, holy crap. It's a stunning view. It really is. And for oh, those listening to this on a podcast platform, the YouTube link is below. Jimmy is sharing a lot of pictures and videos that honestly you do not want to miss. So click that link down below. But what we're looking at here, Jimmy, is just truly no video, no picture can amount to you seeing it with your own eyes. And people say that all the time, but it's true. It, it really is. But seeing this from your point of view, a POV, right, it's it's still astonishing. So yeah. I cannot imagine what was going through your mind when you saw it. I, I, I was peeing on myself. I'm just going to be straight with you. I mean, it, it, you, you, you can't, it, when it's going through your eyes and into your brain, it's just crazy. Oh, look at this. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Now, I come around the corner here. I haven't seen this video uh, since I shot it. But I come around the corner, and I go walk right up to these seams, uh, to the megalithic and photograph how this is uh, shoot how this is put together. Now watch this is all one shot. Watch this. Inca, right? That's Inca. And then megalithic. 
And then look, I go right up to the seams. Look at this. And I, I, I was just like, what? There's no comparison whatsoever. Yeah, it's, it's, it, there isn't any. And and I am just stunned. I'm just absolutely stunned. So yeah, yeah. That, I, 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 you know what the you know what the crazy part is, Christina? Tell me. This is this is just another sight. <laughs> it's just another one. You know, we jump on the bus, head down the road, make a left hand turn, boom. <laughs> Go down the road, over another mountain, right hand turn, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. During, well, Jimmy, during your time there, did you happen to have any UFO sightings by chance or did have not, any in, in depth? Uh, conversations with people regarding UFOs or extraterrestrials and the cases that have happened there? Yeah, now that I did do, uh, of course. And I, um, uh, okay, uh, in the time that we have left, uh, I'll tell you a quick story while I just run this video. Yes. Okay. Hold on, let me pause this. I uh, Excuse me for that, and I will mute it. Because this is a pretty good background. This is when I first arrived in Peru. Um, my first thing, and I wandered up. How, how beautiful is that? And this is right on the Pacific Ocean. So I'm just going to roll this. And so what I ended up doing was as much as I could uh, from uh, not only the indigenous uh, people there and the elders and, and the shamans uh, that I had met, but the local vendors that I made friends with, and I posted a lot of pictures of, of them online, and I, I wanted to talk to the locals. And now there was um, a lot of uh, conversation amongst uh, the, the people on the tour if we were going to have a UFO encounter and if we would see something and, and certainly they did make the request more than once, Jimmy, let's go out, let's summon some stuff in. And we never really had an opportunity to do that, but everybody did because of the, the, the history of, of what is there. But so now I'm out talking to the locals and have you ever had a UFO sighting? Right. Over and over again, same answer. Every night. Well, what do you mean? It happens constantly. Things appear into the mountains. Things leave the mountains. They go up into the stars. They arrive from the stars. They come down into the mountains. Uh, they they fly around the valleys. Um, the, the history of our culture has been contact with aliens since the very, very beginning. And uh, it's the same thing in Nazca. When I was flying over uh, Nazca to hear the, the pilot who I, uh, the pilots who I, I, I talked to for quite a while. Um, when uh, the pilot says to me, wait till I show you the astronaut waving. Oh, what do you mean? On the side of the mountain is an astronaut and he's waving. What part don't you understand? That's so, really? Okay, now I've seen the 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 person waving, but I've never heard it referred to as an astronaut. And this is the local culture. And so he was uh, uh, raised in Lima, the pilot. He was raised in Lima. Um, <laughs> you see my face? Woo! <laughs> um, and, and, and he said that, that that's, that's it. it the, 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 uh, the ET, the extraterrestrials lived here in Peru 
Uh, they lived in Nazca. They lived in Paracas. This is out of the, the, this is an airplane pilot in uniform with his stuff and his hat and his thing. He's the pilot there telling me that E.T. has lived there and has visited there for thousands of years. And this is a part of the culture. Here in the United States, Christina, we have a mind block with that, right? Where our community is different, but but in general, do we walk around? Does our you know does the citizens of the United States walk around going, ET is part of our culture? They've been visiting it. No, that's no, no, no. But go to Peru, and 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 have this conversation with the locals. This is just the way that it is, and and they don't find anything strange about it. They don't. It's a. Uh, it's 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 a. Uh, it's amazing, and it's very comforting. Uh, the the uh, be, as we wrap up this show, I will say this: we had 30, 35 people on our tour uh, from all around the world. We had people from Lithuania, from Switzerland, uh, Canada, uh, all over the United States, and um, to have them say, "It is so great." to not only be amongst people where we can just talk freely, you know, in our group, but with the citizens of the country, right? Because they all have these questions and they want to know, and they can just walk up to anybody and have these conversations about ET in contact where you're not going to be ridiculed or laughed at. They're going to look at you really seriously and go, yeah, 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 it's us. So there you go. I'm going to be going back to Peru in November with Brian Forrester. I just got an email from Brian. We're getting ready to do the formal announcement um, on the dates. But it's right around November uh, 15th, 16th, uh, that Friday uh, in November. And if you want to go, I will uh, 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 make the announcement to everybody. But um, uh, when it's when you can go and 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 get all of your information, come down, come down to Peru. Uh, I can't wait for my second trip down there. You want to really see this for yourself, Christina? You're invited. Come hang out with us. Jimmy, thank you so much for going into detail on all the things that you experienced in Peru, sharing with us all of your videos and photos, because it was amazing to see it from your point of view versus just reading an article, reading from a website. You going into detail, I know many, including myself, found it very valuable, but also obviously very interesting as well. Jimmy, thank you, as always, for being on the show. I appreciate you. Bye. See ya. It's another great show. You know what? We've missed Jimmy with Mysteries with a History. If you enjoyed the show, hit that like button. Right now we have 590 people watching this live. 447 likes. Hit that like button. Let's get to 500 likes right here, right now. I'll give you a second. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed the show, also consider subscribing. I do three live shows right here every single week. And tomorrow will be weekly strange news. You do not want you do not want to miss that. Follow me on Twitter at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news, along with on Instagram at strange paradigms, where I share pictures and short videos. If you want to continue this conversation, bring it over to the discord server with 2,700 other like-minded members. Share your thoughts, your insights, your experiences, and more. I know one of my amazing moms will share that link in the live chat. If you are enjoying all the content that you're seeing right here on this channel, consider being being a Patreon supporter. All the funding goes right to the channel, to Puck the Puck Wedgie, and to the RV Fund, where I'll be traveling the U.S., hitting all the UFO and paranormal hotspots, documenting it, and taking you on the journey with me. I want to say thank you to everyone watching this live, all the Super Chats, Super Stickers, YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and of course, all of my amazing moderators. You know I cannot do this show without you. That is it for today. I will see you tomorrow. Be safe, and remember, keep your eyes on the skies.